Welcome my friends, we got a brand new home office and desk setup for you, updated for 2022, this time focusing on both productivity and creativity. Let's go. Now of course, any office and desk setup tour needs to start with the desk. This is the same desk I've used before, Ikea Gerton tabletop with a motorized base that I bought on Amazon and just drilled into the bottom. Links to everything down in the description. Now, the biggest difference from previous setups is I used to use a MacBook Pro laptop connected to one external monitor, and I use that laptop here. The issue with that is laptop monitor all the way down here, you're craning your neck, and then you're going back up, up and down, and then using a trackpad was giving me just like pain with my wrist. So, got a more ergonomic setup. I have trackpad on the left, I got this very ergonomic mouse, which is a neutral grip. I'm not too pronated, it's more neutral. Now have an external keyboard like this as well. But the biggest game changer has been these monitors. So shout out to LG for sending me these monitors. These are the LG Dulups, and I have two of them side by side. The reason is that dual monitor is obviously better for productivity. But the issue with that is when you have a normal aspect ratio, these are 16 by 18, but when you have the normal, you know, what is that, 16 by nine, those have a major issue, which is that the far ends of the screens they're just too far from your eye. So I, I used to have that set up in previous desk setup tours, as you can see right here. And I just wouldn't really use the size of the monitor because it was too far, I need to crane my neck. But these are actually more optimized for the human visual field because you have a lot of space right where you actually can see. And what this means is you have four quadrants. So window, top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right, just like that, real easy. And the cool thing is you can set up your hotkeys so that you can quickly change it from you know, the full screen to the bottom half to the top half to just one of the, the four quadrants within that monitor, right? Normally I have the four like this, I'll have my music as just you know one small corner, I'll have maybe my slack on the other. And this way I'm really maximizing and optimizing for that productivity, which I love. And then the other cool thing is they come on these ergo stands, so you can position it exactly how you need with like literally millimeter precision, wherever it's perfect for you, and it'll just hold it there. So wherever you move it, if you want to rotate it, it'll just stay there, which is really cool. And the way that the arms are designed, you actually save a lot of space. So you can have things underneath and behind your monitor without issue. Got my external hard drive, my Mac Studio, my audio equipment over here. So LG has also really optimized this for creatives. They have a nano IPS technology, really accurate colors. So if you do video editing and such, which I do from time to time, especially for my OnlyFans, then this is really optimal for that. And the last thing is if you do wanna use this with a laptop, single USB-C gives you both the actual display as well as charges your laptop. So that's pretty neat. And then I have a USB hub underneath my desk that actually connects to the monitors so I just connect my Mac Studio to the monitor, and then the monitor with the cable management hides those cables, goes down to the USB hub, and it's just, it's super clean, and I love that. Going back to the peripherals, I've been tempted to go mechanical keyboard. It's like the cool thing to do, right? All the YouTubers are doing it, but the issue is that I use this fingerprint sensor all the time, and I just can't get away from that. And then of course, the trackpad, because gestures with the left hand just makes the whole multitasking and just interacting with the computer seamless. Put it on top of a, felt desk pad because this way I don't really need a little mouse. I can just move it anywhere and things just work seamlessly. And I think aesthetically, it's a nice touch. I do care a lot about audio. So I connect my Mac Studio to this shit stack, which is a shit Modius and a shit Asgard. It's a DAC and amp combo. And these go out to Emotiva Airmotive 4 speakers, which sound amazing because they have these ribbon tweeters. So the highs are like super crisp and clear. And in case I wanna listen to headphones, I got these Sennheiser HD 600s, which are my all time favorite headphones. I've had these for, I think like 12 or 14 years and they're still going strong. I just had to change the, change the pads because they flatten out over, over the years. I've also added a external hard drive because when you have computer problems, it's devastating, especially if you're a creative and you do a lot of work on your computer and you lose that data, you try to back it up to the cloud, but when there's terabytes of data, then it's very slow to recover and to download all that. So having an external hard drive where I time machine back up my computer to is, is really key, mission critical actually. And I use that only for time machine backups. I do also back up to the cloud because if that hard drive fails, I don't wanna be SOL. So back up your data guys, very, very important. Upgrading to a Mac Studio up from a MacBook Pro, it was a nice to have, definitely not a need to have. So the MacBook Pro is already so capable these days. I do like having a desktop because one, it's plugged into the ethernet, so my internet upload and download is way faster, way more reliable. 
Um, you know, having the SD card reader right up front is also really nice. The power is definitely much higher, which I primarily notice when I am doing the occasional video editing, but definitely not necessary for a lot of people. This is overkill for me. So going to the right of the desk, there's also some thought and optimization here. So I, like most of us, often get distracted by my phone. So I have my phone on this charging dock, but very intentionally that charging dock is out of sight. So this is close enough and this is in the corner so that when I'm sitting here, I literally cannot see my phone. And that is enough because out of sight, out of mind, it's enough to actually reduce the level of distraction I get from my phone. And that brings us to the bottom of the desk because this is standing. So press of a button, it will go up to my predetermined height and I can stand at the desk. Below the desk, there's a lot going on because I am doing some experimentation. So let me get this out of the way. I'll tell you about that in a sec. Standing mat, right? A little more cushion so that you don't fatigue your feet as rapidly. And when I am standing, I like to be, I don't want to just be standing still, right? That's not ideal. You want to be moving. And it also feels really good to do some self myofascial release, self massage, if you will. So a foot massager, lacrosse ball, a rubs ball, that's like golf ball size and has these little nubs on it. So I'll just be standing and then rolling my feet on these and that'll do a lot to actually, um, like it feels good and I don't get tired of standing as quickly. And that brings us to this little thing, which is a prototype, not for sale yet. They're actually making tweaks and improvements on this version, but this is a standing board, essentially. You stand on this while you're at your standing desk and each of these moves somewhat independently and it activates the intrinsic muscles of your feet, which is good for if you have various aches and pains, back pain, foot pain, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll be talking about that more in a future video. So the setup isn't just about productivity, it's about creativity, right? So that brings us to the back of the room. And first of all, the same voiceover setup for the Mescal Insiders channel that I've been using for, I think four, four years. So we got a Blue Yeti mic, pop filter, reflection shield, and some headphones. So all about reducing the friction. So it's very easy to just put it on and then bam, we're ready to go. No, no setup required, right? And back here on this Ikea shelving unit, obviously a lot of storage, but also I try to express my personality a little bit. And this is in the backdrop of all my Zoom videos. If you can't already tell, I kind of like cars. In fact, I even started a YouTube channel about them called Jabal and Cars linked up here. And you should definitely check that out. I do a lot of driving reviews and such, but they kind of make me happy. As ridiculous as that sounds, I have a growing collection. I rotate these in. Uh, also with my, my normal talking head YouTube studio set up downstairs, I'm changing those cars video to video. Um, I just got this one recently, Lamborghini Diablo. This was legit my favorite car, especially in this exact color when I was a kid in elementary school and middle school growing up. So just like seeing that, it kind of gets me back to that more, maybe not like childlike state, but like that more creative and, and more inspired state that I think is much more common when we're kids. Shout out to LG for sending me this little uh, dual up monitor model. It broke in shipping, but we'll just, oops, we'll glue it back together. But that was, that was really kind of them. I don't like using my phone for Pomodoros because as soon as I pick up my phone, I'm checking my Instagram, I'm getting distracted. So I use good old fashioned hourglasses. This one is 30 minutes. This one is five minutes and I'll use these at my desk when I want to get a more dedicated Pomodoro focus session in. And that's it guys. That is my 2022 desk setup and studio tour. Thanks for watching again, links to everything down in the description. Much love my friends and I'll see you guys in the next one.